Yes, sir. We're officially back at it. This is Book Nice coming at you with another episode of ACBA Saturday. This is just a little introduction into the video, I suppose. So I don't even know what's going to be in this, this month's episode, but I'm sure it'll be good. So let's get into it. What's up, fans of ACBA, and welcome to another episode of ACBA Saturday. On today's episode, David brings you a Minuteman review of the Figma Giver figure. Todd Ortiz updates you on new UPC codes for the upcoming Marvel Legends waves. Book Nice brings you a new segment called Bump. We talk all about ACBA's involvement in the Age of Art art gallery, as well as a few behind the scenes segments from a couple of different artists that were involved. And we congratulate Al Chang for the birth of his new twins. All this and much, much more on today's episode of ACBA Saturdays. G'day ACBA fans, Smashville here again, just um, recording a little segment on NSA. So um, what does NSA stand for? It's a hashtag um, which is also an abbreviation that we use on the page and just in any general ACBA group. Um, NSA stands for no strings attached or no stands anywhere. And basically it means um, you're using a setup that requires some balance um, for example, you've got a, a character in flight or in just a um, balancing pose on one hand or on one foot or on both hands or something like that or balancing on top of another character. Something that requires some balance and some technique and would be achievable with a stand but you're not using a stand and all you're using is your posing skills and um, that kind of stuff. Um, it's a very popular technique in the in the group and usually gets a lot of attention from people that know what they're talking about and people that know proper ACBA because due to the degree of difficulty in setting things up. So I've got a little simple setup down here and um, I'll give you a closer look at it to, and break down what I've got going on there. Cool. Alright so this is what we're working with here today. Just got a simple setup, two figures. Didn't go for anything too extreme like an in-flight shot or anything like that but still um, Nice bit of balance work going on with Iron Fist. And um, yeah, got, got Dakin reacting to the kick nicely without having any stands hidden there holding either of them up. So yeah, anything along these lines is going to be NSA. Um, it's applicable in, <clears throat> in like a fight setup or in just a vanilla um, team shot set up, any kind of situation really you can work an NSA kind of pose in there even in just solo shots. Yeah, so um, love to see what you guys come up with with your NSA shots and um, make sure you always use the tag when you're posting stuff on Instagram and, um, and on Facebook and yeah, good looking out guys. Tag with the grind on it's the hashtag we use in the articulated comic book art community when we post a shot and we want feedback for our posing or cutouts or anything anything in our in our uh, composition or picture just uh uploaded with the tag WTGO with the grind on and this is what I'm about to do. See what is wrong with my shot or is good on it, whatever. Not whatever, but let's see how things go in the community. We'll see what the community thinks about this shot. Hey, what's up, guys? Russell here. You might know me better as Nintendo Ninja from Instagram. I want to talk to you today about a couple of things. Uh, first off, the first one being rarely used figures or RUF. The second one being OTS or on the spot. And the third one is the difference between Instagram and Facebook as a means of improving yourself as an artist. So first off, rarely used figure is ex basically exactly how it sounds. It's uh, an action figure that doesn't get the love or attention that it could get or should get possibly within the ACBA community. Uh, for reasons being, it's a bad figure. Um, a prime example of that would be uh, Toy Biz Scarlet Witch. Um, it's been updated 
uh, or improved by Hasbro. Again, Scarlet Witch is a perfect example of that. Uh, the other thing, it lacks applications within the ACBA community, uh, so it doesn't get the attention that it might properly deserve. Uh, so yeah, basically I have a display here in the background of a couple of rarely used figures that I'll show you now. So yeah, basically here we have Ultimate Green Goblin Builder figure facing off against the Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, these are both decent figures, there's nothing wrong with them, like really, uh, they just don't seem to get a lot of attention within the community, so they sit in the rarely used figure pile. Second thing I'd like to talk to you today about is OTS, or on the spot. Basically, what you have is someone's going to call you out on the Facebook group, the ACBA Facebook group, uh, and you, that gives you 30 minutes to set up a display. It could be a themed display depending on the person calling you out. So you have 30 minutes to set up a display and then post your product on the Facebook group. Uh, obviously being ACBA we have rules and guidelines so you have to make sure you abide by those rules and make sure your work is clean cropped and contained. Uh, and once you've once you've uh, posted your work online, then it's your turn to call out the next person. That's the basis and the, the roundup for uh, OTS. Uh, and finally, the difference between IG and or Instagram and Facebook as a means of improving yourself as an artist. So, Instagram is a great place to build followers and a fan base and get yourself started as a as an artist because there's a lot of people out there who are using Instagram. Uh, the difference is that a lot of those people are not uh, toy photographers or ACBA artists in, in uh, particular. Um, so you'll get a lot of compliments for your work and a lot of good comments for your work which is great. It tells you that you're doing something right. But if you really want to improve um, as an artist, then the ACBA Facebook group page is the best place to go for that. Uh, you're there with like-minded artists who are all there to do the same thing. Uh, you will get constructive criticism. Some people will be very direct about how they criticize your work, but as long as you've got broad shoulders and take it on board as a positive thing and not as a negative thing, then you will improve very quickly. The way I look at uh, criticism on my work is that people that are criticizing me for what I'm doing is a positive thing based on they want to see me improve and reach a potential that I'm capable of. So by doing that you go away with a shot that you've started on, come back with something that's improved and you'll earn the respect and the adoration of the group as a whole. So that's about it for today guys, thanks for watching and don't forget to stick around for the rest of the show. Peace! Hey everybody, D Amazing here, giving you a quick show at my War Machine setup. War Machine Mark II Custom versus it's a bunch of Ultrons. Basically I want to give you guys a quick show of what I'm doing. I've been working with cutouts a lot lately. Thank you Tyler, at Tystar. Thank you Boog for showing me. that. Eh. It's not so bad to use cutouts and they give a little extra flair to something. And I do my best to hide stands. But sometimes I can't hide it, sometimes you can. But it's nothing a little focus can't take care of. I use a mixture of Tamashi stages, Godzilla effect explosions, cutouts, and uh, stands. If you look closely, I use a combination of them all. Well placed in a sturdy environment. And it takes me time to set up, but <clears throat> overall, it's something I really enjoy doing once I get the end result of something that I really like. Here's my custom War Machine Mark II. I'm going to be doing a video review on that as well. And basically, it's done by Double O Gun and Reviews 2. <clears throat> my boy Jordan, sitting out there. He's actually been doing a lot of work for me lately. He usually works on Gunpla, but his repaints on my SH Figart stuff has been utterly amazing. He even added decals to it, so... Yeah, hopefully I'll be giving you guys a real better look at that soon. Always, guys, thanks for coming through and checking it out. I appreciate it. 
support the IWO and ACBA community. Come through and do some more. Have a good night, guys. Later. Bump. This little bump segment is a segment where we will highlight uh, picks from the ACBA group or uh, the fan page or uh, for the most part, all the picks will originate in the ACBA group, but it'll be things that really uh, were hot uh, for the past month, things that were bumped a lot in the group or things that made the uh, ACBA uh, Sunday special on Instagram. So this first picture was by uh, Jeremy Lee, and it was a nice play on the end credits of the um, Avengers 2 movie, and this was hot all over the internet this month. It made the uh, Sunday special for the 3rd, for May 3rd, 2015. So this uh, picture uh, made the Sunday special, and it also graduated to the uh, fan page album. So big shout out to Jeremy Lee. This was a really, really dope picture. And ironically, that picture that I just showed from Jeremy Lee was also part of the Age of Art Gallery show this past month, which we'll talk about in this episode. So we'll get back around to that. But... Also, if you don't really know what bump is, bump is when you actually type the words bump in the ACBA group uh, to show that you're trying to bump a picture back to the top of the thread and give it some more shine. And, uh, you know, people will bump things periodically if they really like them or if it's something that's not really getting enough love because maybe it got pushed down, uh, you know, different reasons. But this was another great picture uh, by my man Pancheesy who did a collage style display here. And this was part of one of his uh, segments in his uh, show, Posing Ain't Easy. And you learned about collage setups in the past episode of ACBA Saturday. So if you didn't check that out, definitely check that out. But this was really well put together. And this was another hot uh, picture this past month. And here we have another really, really clean popular shot in the past month. This shot also made the ACBA Sunday special. Uh, and this was a shot by Michael Wisman with the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And it's just so clean, so well composed. Uh, the cutout is perfectly cut and angled and placed and just everything looks so crisp and so clear right here. This is a, a great representation of, of ACBA. And again, this got a lot of love in the group this past month. It was actually also featured on Purple Revolver's website as a, as a feature of the week as well. So this was heating up on the internet this past month. Shout out to my man, Mike Wisman. And real quick, there's a B-side to Mike's shot. So if you don't know about A, B, and C-side techniques, uh, something that we do in the ACBA group where you would post, uh, you know, your main picture, then post something that's a little different, maybe a different angle or a different cutout or something like that. And then the C side would be where you pull the camera all the way back and show your entire setup and show how it was done. So again, this was his uh, his B side, just a change of the cutout. And while we on Turtles, this was a shot from my man Jerry Gamboa, who actually had put up a shot in a group. Uh, put he had originally put up a shot for this that you know had some some issues with it, and then you know he got some feedback and worked on it and put up this and this looks amazing the explosion in the back and the way the uh, mouses are blowing up and everything in the front just the layers in general look great and this is you know straight up great acba right here so shout out to jerry shout out to my man billy paleo aka flipnosis who had a really great shot this month as well uh with carnage here this is actually just uh a portion of the shot there's a larger shot that has spider-man in it and he went over it in his uh in his vlog uh called um the flip side so you should definitely check that out the link to his show will be in the underbar but this was a very well put together shot the lighting everything looks great the cutout is immaculate so good work this was a certified heater this month as well uh i'm sure this one is is well over 500 600 uh, in the group, and it also made the uh, ACB Sunday special. This is from my man Fabio Jordel Poli, uh, and this came out amazing. Very simple shot. Uh, I, I think it may have went up for Simple Sunday. I'm not sure, but just just immaculate. Uh, the posing uh, is on point. The lighting, uh, the framing, everything just looks really, really good here. This is the Figma Guts figure that you see featured. This was a really fun shot from my man Sergio Santos from Brazil. And I forgot to mention that uh, Fabio uh, is from Brazil as well. So Brazil heating up. The Brazilians doing a thing this month. Uh, this shot also made the uh, Instagram Sunday special. 
little dance contest going on here, but the posing is so on point. I mean, he really, really was able to capture, uh, uh, you know, dance movements and, and really relay that to, to the viewer with the posing here. And this picture was actually used as part of uh, a little compilation with this new app that we're working with on the uh, ACBA Instagram called Trio. And maybe I'll be able to show that in this in this uh, episode as well. But big shout out to Sergio. This was a really nice shot. And I think this is the last one we're going to do for this week, but this was from my man Ash, and this was a really fun shot that got a lot of likes and a lot of attention in the group. I mean, this resonates with all of us as collectors. You know, we always waiting for that bag. What's in the fucking so box? this came out really, really cool. Nice framing, nice lighting. I mean, it's just a simple shot, but it's just something that really resonates with collectors, and it, it was very well done. So, Minute Men Reviews. For today's one minute review, we have Figma's Giver. The Giver is a beautifully sculpted figure looking like it just jumped out of the manga series. Articulation is dead on as are all the details. As with all Figma figures, we have a plethora of hands as well as storage. We even have an unopened Giver system, which is kind of neat. Doesn't really do much, but it's kind of neat. As with all Figmas, we have a display stand, though with the Giver, the peg hole in the back was a little shallow. We even have extended arm blades that you can plug and play for the melee combat scenes, as well as an alternate chest panel. This is really cool for bringing the arms in closer for the pressure cannon. Finally, we have a new chest with, that allows the Mega Smasher to be displayed. Figma's Giver is an awesome figure. I highly recommend if you're a fan of the series. How's it going? Poncheezy here coming at you real quick to talk to you about something really cool that the ACBA community was a part of recently, and that's the Age of Art Art Show. So for those of you who don't really know, Age of Art is an art show brought to you by the store Vinyl Saurus and Artiologist. It's a really cool name. And the really cool thing was that there was tons of ACBA in the gallery. There are a lot of great pieces by a lot of different great artists featuring from live displays from Fabio and the DMC. Henry Beltran had some really great deals there and there were tons of shots by top ACBA artists, including Shannon Bowie, who was the winner of this year's Photo Combat. It was just generally a really cool event. It was the perfect way for the average Joe to just come into the art gallery, take a look at ACBA, and then we, as artists, could see how, you know, the average person sees the art form known as ACBA. It was really cool, and the reactions were unbelievable. People were just looking at these shots, and they were just like, amazed and then the best thing about that was they would look at the shots and then they would come over and check out the displays and then it would click in their brain like oh you guys aren't using photoshop you guys aren't doing any of that stuff this is all 
tangible displays and what you see in the camera is achieved with physical objects in the real world. And it was just seeing like their brain clicking and the reaction of that, which really, really solidified what ACBA is all about. Another cool thing was even though if you weren't able to make it out there, Fabio and I collaborated on getting a stream going. He basically used Meerkat on his phone and then I captured his Meerkat stream and streamed it on Twitch. And it was really, really cool. Every couple of minutes, somebody would come by, pick up the phone, and then do a tour of the gallery, take a look at the art and the displays and people's reactions. It was just really, really cool. So on the behalf of the entire ACBA community, I just want to go ahead and thank John and Lisa Armstrong, who are the owners of Vinyl Source and Archaeologists. Not only was it a great opportunity, but more importantly, it was just a lot of fun. It was really great getting ACBA out there, letting people know, seeing reactions, just generally everybody getting together and having a really good time. And the coverage doesn't really stop here either. Coming up next, we got a couple of different segments highlighting some of the behind the scenes stuff from artists that had their art displayed at the art gallery. Enjoy. What up posers, it's a DMC aka The People's Champ and I just want to give a quick shout out to everyone that participated and supported the Age of Art show that was this past weekend. Uh, shout out to John for inviting us, uh, Boog for setting it up and letting me be a part of it. Um, of course my partners in crime, Adrian, Henry and Fabio. It was really cool meeting you guys and hanging out. Um, even Russell Fuller from Australia stopped by on his first night in America to help support uh, the art show. Uh, big ups to Chris. Uh, it was really cool meeting you. And it was so cool that he even gave me a prop uh, for my shots. So big shout out to him for that. Um, also Mo, it's good meeting you. Uh, Hopefully, we'll see some shots from you soon. Hope you keep in touch. Overall, it was a great experience. Um, a lot of people weren't aware of ACBA, and now they are. Uh, They're really, really uh, excited and thought everything was really cool. Um, they couldn't believe that's what stuff that you do with action figures. Um, they really enjoyed the live displays. I think that helped uh, sell the whole art show, and, and what we do is seeing the live displays and understanding its displays and posing, um, props to help um, create the whole scene, of course, the cutouts too. Um, but it was a really positive experience. I hope to do it again soon. Um, and that's it for now. Peace. Yo, what up? How's everybody doing? Um, I'm going to go over a quick little segment and uh, just talk about what I did for my piece for the Age of Art uh, gallery that went on over the weekend. And the main focal point of my setup was this Ant-Man cutout. And uh, just to quickly show you my little box of cutouts. Uh, so this is where I keep all of my cutouts. Um, some of them are cut up, uh, some aren't. Uh, even if I've used them before, uh, I'm sure I could find, you know, other uses for them later on in the future. Uh, some of these I got from the Articulated Comic Book Art uh, shop. Uh, this is probably one of the first cutouts I ever did. Uh, you can see the wax on it. Touched it up. It's a must. You must touch up your cutouts with a Sharpie. Uh, I think Michael Weissman has probably the best tutorial uh, about touching them up. But, uh,. Uh, let me get into it real quick. So, uh, this Ant-Man cutout was a pain to cut, but I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, the other one, like you just saw on the other side, it was, uh, it was too big, so I redid it on the other side. 
and uh, I'm not sure if you guys saw the photo or not, but to get uh, that flat feel out of the display, I curved the actual paper and believe it or not, it made a huge difference. Uh, as you can see, the arm curves out, curves in, you know, uh, relative to the motion. And it, and in my opinion, I think it did the job pretty well. And I just stuck them here. And, uh, so this was the, the spot that I had them tucked in. Um, I just had the, the bad guy set up in the back, the thugs. I uh, put a little cotton behind his foot for the running effect. Put the matrix bullet effects in these little crevices. And that was about it. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to the ACBA admins for putting this on. It was definitely a privilege. And uh, thank you guys. Well, until next time. Peace. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Henry Beltran bringing you a little close-up of the dioramas that I took to the Age of Art show here in La Puente and uh, this is the main one that was actually drawing a lot of attention at the show and as you can see, if you, any of you guys watched the, um, the live stream we had going on you'll see a couple of stuff that, um, that I already added to it because that day when I took it, it wasn't really done, but now it's already about maybe maybe about 90% done. I already added um, a couple of signs there and right here. I made those barrels over there. Also made a little bed, like a restraining bed or something like that. And um, I'm still working on this wall, but it's almost there. Should be done before um, before the end of the weekend. Yeah. So here's this one. I have um, carnage for scale, so you guys could get a, a good size reference. And uh, here's the other one that I took. And I have my uh, custom Spider-Man there. And um, this one, uh, I guess this one's about done. I, I still want to add a couple of things, maybe a little bit more rubble to it. Maybe a more um, big pieces in the bag or something like that, but for the most part, this one's it was done. It was a quick dial that I did. Destroyed little diorama. Like this. Um, yeah. That's it. And also, I'm working on um, on this little wall. And this is actually for... Um, I'll be, I'm going to be sending this, I think, to Texas or something. This That's going to be for uh, Russell. He's uh, doing a little, um, little trip here in the U.S. And we're gonna go ahead and everybody from the ACBA family has to sign that. So if you know where he's at, you gotta meet up with him and make sure you sign this so he can take it back to Australia. Okay then. All right, so if anybody wants to see more of my work, you can find me on YouTube. My username is Henry715. Also, you can find me on Instagram and there's where I post most of my stuff, webs, anything like that. You'll see it there first. And that's the same thing. My Instagram is Henry715. And like I said before, that's where I do most of my posting. And also you can find me on the, on the Facebook page, Dial Structure. And you'll see some of my work there as well. All right, talk to you guys soon. Peace. Hey everybody, how's it going? Punch Easy here coming at you from Posing Ain't Easy, talking to you guys a little bit about my shots that were featured in the Age of Art Art Gallery. And let's go! So for the gallery, I had two shots in mind, and I'm not gonna lie, I racked my brain for a really long time thinking about these shots. 
uh, I kind of put it off for maybe about a week or two and then just you know try to like kind of brainstorm what the perfect shots would be and then finally one day everything just clicked and I got to work so the first shot was really cool it featured Ant-Man sitting next to Thor's hammer as well as Captain America's shield you know when he was really teeny tiny and really small and he's just you know sitting there you know chilling on the back of the shield and he's just like reflecting on when he first got into the team and I just thought that would be a really cool you know kind of serene scene to shoot and it turned out perfectly so a cool thing about these two props is they're not full props these are actually light decos that I picked up from Target a while ago and they worked out perfectly because Captain America's shield is supposed to be half in the ground and it's only really half of a prop so it worked out great same thing goes for Thor's hammer it was just really fun to shoot and I even got a really nice B set out of it featuring just Ant-Man's helmet next to all of his team teammates gear and it just looked really tight and next up was my final shot featuring Ant-Man as well as my foot and my hand I know riveting stuff I've actually had this shot on my mind for a really long time and for those of you who don't understand the reference it's definitely from Derek Zoolander what is this a center for ants what so when I first set this scene up I was next to this great kind of manhole cover thing the background looked great but it just smelled bad and the wind coming in there was too strong and it just kept on knocking everything out kept on like skewing the cutout it just wasn't working at all so i just moved over to a new location and everything worked out perfectly smooth sailing from there all i really had to do was just pull up some grass and uh adjust the cutout and take about 50 shots on my hand and my foot and uh yo it turned out great <laughs> So, those are my two shots for Age of Art. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you guys want to check out anything else I do online, this is my online handle for basically everything else I do. And if you guys dug the kind of behind the scenes stuff I did today, I got a whole show based on that. It's called Posing Ain't Easy. You can search for it right here on YouTube. And enjoy the next segment. Peace. This is from one I shot from Age of Art exhibition. Um, this will end up as normal. And this is one of one of the panel. Here I set up all goons. They are like looking for Ant Man. Uh, previous panel showed that he's shrinking and he disappeared from their view. They are looking for him. Let me get my foot straight. Okay, now Ant Man showed up uh, from under the car. It's still motion. Set up a small, smaller one and a big one, and then the. The next pad gonna shrink to his full, I um, mean, grow full size and hit the gun at the back there. So it's just pretty simple the background, the cars and the goons. And here I have the white background and uh, my lightning. What I use was a remote flash. And I bounce it over that white background. It gives like a uniform lighting for the display. What's up, still incurable collector, with a quick behind the scenes look at some art. Some art that I'm doing for the Age of Art event that's going to be happening May 30th out in Southern California. It's a gallery taking place where several um, AC Bay artists work will be featured as prints. Now the... Um, most of these prints that, you, that you'll be seeing will be inspired either from Age of Ultron, Avengers Age of Ultron, or Marvel's new Ant-Man film that's coming up in uh, June, July, I think. One of the other, this one here is obviously taken from, taken inspiration from Avengers Age of Ultron. You have the Mark 43 suit there front and center. He's blowing up one of Ultron drones, or maybe it's Ultron himself. He's getting blown to pieces pretty much. You can see his various appendages getting uh, separated from his body there. I'm using a bunch of effects here. I'm using the Tamashi impact effects as well as the explosion effects. Also, I'm using some Hobgoblin effects. Some of those flame effects that, you, that came with the build a figure Hobgoblin. All to try to build this huge explosion. So yeah, just a quick uh, behind the scenes look at the build 
add some photography. Got these various lights all over the place. So yeah. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode. If you like what you saw, check out ACBA on Facebook, Instagram, and our official website. Links to those and everyone that appeared in the video will be down below. If you pre-ordered anything like flight stands, cutouts, t-shirts, anything like that, they'll be shipping soon. So stay tuned and keep it crispy. That's crispy.